Let's look at an inelastic collision in two dimensions. So we'll start with a ball that has mass, say, one kilogram. Make the math easy. Uh, and it's moving this way with a velocity of, say, four meters per second. And it's going to strike another ball over here that has mass of 1.5 kilograms that is initially at rest. And as a result of this collision, uh, this one kilogram ball ends up going this way. So this is our one kilogram ball. Uh, and it's going to go that way at, say, three meters per second. What I want to know is what is that other ball doing? What's its velocity? What's its direction? And let's go ahead and say that this angle right here is 30 degrees. Okay? And this is inelastic, so I cannot assume that the kinetic energy is conserved. We do know right away that this other 1.5 kilogram ball has to be moving this direction uh, down and right because this thing has slowed down, so it does not have as much momentum as x as it used to have. So just to make our momentum in x stay the same, this has to have an x component, and it's got to have a negative y component because uh, it's got to add back up to zero, right? So the law of conservation of momentum we can apply in both directions. And so this angle down here, uh, we don't know. So if we just write the law of conservation of momentum in x and in y, the momentum in x is given by 4, times 1, and that has to equal uh, 1 times 3 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, that's the x component of that, plus the x component of the other one, which I don't know, but this is 1.5 times Vb down here, so this would be plus uh, 1.5 Vb cosine phi, where phi is this angle here. That's the momentum in x. Uh, the momentum in y looks similar, except we'll be in y. So initially we had 0, and we have 0 equals uh, 1 times 3 times the sine of 30. And now I either have to deal with the fact that this angle is negative, or I'm going to subtract this. So I'm just going to go ahead and subtract uh, 1.5 vb times the sine of the angle phi. Right? So there's my law of conservation of momentum in two dimensions. And right away from this, we can actually see we only have two unknowns, Vb and Phi. And so we're actually going to be able to use substitution. We can get these things to eliminate. And so if I just solve this equation, I see that 3 sine 30 is equal to 1.5 Vb sine Phi. Sine of 30 is a half, uh, so I have 3 times a half is equal to, whoops, this is phi, not theta. 3 times a half is equal to 1.5 Vb sine phi. And so multiply this, we get 3 halves equals, right, 1 and a half is still 3 halves Vb sine phi. Or what we get is 1 equals vb sine phi. Now, there's one equation with two unknowns in it, uh, sine phi and vb. We're going to probably want to make a substitution, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and solve this for vb. vb equals 1 over sine phi. And now I can take this and plug it back in up here. Uh, and so now when I do that, I get 4 times 1 is 4. 4 equals 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times the cosine of 30, square root of 3 over 2, but okay, uh, plus 1.5, and now I have uh, cosine phi over sine phi. And happily, that's just cotangent, so we can actually throw all this into our calculator, figure out what our angle is. Uh, once we know our angle, then we can put it in here to find VB, and we're done, right? So we can do that with substitution and elimination. But we can also do it uh, a really other cool other way. Uh, and it gets back to momentum is conserved. And the fact that momentum is conserved means that the sum of the momenta of each ball afterwards has to equal the momentum of the first ball that we had before the interaction. So let's take a look at drawing that picture. So afterwards I have this vector right here, this vector right here. Those are momentum vectors. So I have 1 times 3. That's the momentum of the first ball. And I know this angle right here 
from the original direction is 30 degrees. Uh, and I also know that I have this vector, which has to add up to what we started with. So this vector is 1.5 VB. That's the momentum here. But together, they add up to this vector down here. And that vector down there is simply what we started with, 1 times 4. Right? So now I have this cool uh, triangle. I know an angle, and I know two sides of it, and I'm interested in the third side. Okay? We actually have a tool for that. The law of cosines lets us do this with any triangle at all. We can solve any triangle if we know uh, two sides and the angle between them. And so the law of cosines, the, the, the version of it that I memorized, says a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c equals c squared, where this is the triangle, any triangle, uh, a, whoops, sorry, a, b, c, so capital letters on my vertices, and the sides opposite those are their lowercase letters, a, b, and c, right? So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to say this is side a, and this is side b, and this is side c, and this is angle a, and this is angle B, and this is angle C. And I'm just going to apply the law of cosines to it. So A squared is this side. That becomes 1 times 4 is 4. 4 squared plus B squared. B is this side. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, so 3 squared minus 2AB. So that's 2 times A, which is 4, times B, which is 3, times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 30 degrees, uh, is equal to this side over here, c squared, but that's uh, c squared. Okay, and c squared, remember, uh, c is equal to 1.5 vb. Uh, that's how that side was, was designated. So with this, we can actually now simplify a little bit. 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 4 is 8, times 3 is uh, minus 24, cosine 30 equals c squared. Well, this you can throw right into your calculator and get a value for c. Uh, and once you know c, divide it by 1.5 and you have vb. And now you have this uh, velocity, which was the question. And then when you want the angle uh, for this vector, it's actually this angle, because uh, if we put our parallel line, right, this is the direction it was originally going, there would be that angle below that, and alternate interior angles are congruent. And then you can use the law of sines uh, to find that angle. 